Just one hole. Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. Today I'm going to talk ants, ant modes, on how you can stop ants from getting near feeders. Right now I don't have any ants, so I don't have any ant modes out. But you can solve that problem so easy. There are many feeders that have a built-in ant moat. Some of you have told me that the water dries out right away, and it does. You can also buy ant moats, and some of them are plastic, and some of them are copper. But the point is, if you're in an area that's really hot, this small amount of water can dry out. Now, I made this one, but that's usually the size they are. If you're having a problem where the water dries out, then the ants will go back inside and go back down and crawl around your cup. But you can make a super duper ant moat that they cannot pass. And today I'm gonna to show you how. Let's talk for a few seconds about how and what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a bottle. Any type of bottle provided one thing. You want a small spout on the top, like a soda bottle, water bottle, and a few other things. Even a shampoo bottle will work. Oil bottles will work. Here's a vinegar bottle. That will work too. You get the idea. What you're looking for, here's a soap bottle. Wash the bottle out real good. It will work. A small spout on the top. A coffee jar, though you can make it work, will be a pain. I'm just going to let you know right now. So you don't want something that has a big top. You want something that has a small top on the top of it. And what we're going to do is cut it down and make it for the size that you want. Now, with a, with a soda bottle or any bottle has a small top, you can cut it any size you want. You got so much water disappearing out of your property. Go ahead in your garden and cut it and make a great big reservoir. Because when you cut it, that's going to be the reservoir for your water. The ants cannot swim. Some of you have said, no, they swim across. No, they're not. We do not have swimming ants in the United States. And I don't know how many other countries may have, but we don't. And the point is, what happens is debris gets in there, leaves get in there, and the ants can use that as a bridge. Then they can crawl across as they come down the wire. They can go this way. Keep one thing in mind. No matter what, the ant has to find your hummingbird feeder first. If one ant comes out, crawls down, finds all that sugar water, crawls back up, runs back to his nest and say, come on guys, I found it. If they don't find it, then you're not going to have any problems. He can't find it, he doesn't even know it's there. So what you're trying to do is prevent them from finding it. Now, with this, I'm going to bring you in in a second, explain to you exactly how easy these are to make and why we want a small reservoir. Because this little part on the bottom is going to be where you're going to seal it up. And if you had to seal up all this, you'd be using a ton of glue to seal it up. With a small top, you, you need almost nothing. It will cost you next to nothing to make these. You can make them all sizes using all different wires and all different bottles. Come on in and let me show you exactly how I made some of these. So here I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to make an ant moat. Now you can use almost any type of bottle. This is a shampoo bottle. Notice the narrow top. This is a bottle from oil, just cooking oil. Narrow top. You want something with a small top. Dish soap, washed out. Every container washed out really good. Again, it doesn't have to be round. See how this one's skinny, but it's still going to work. You don't want something like this because it's too big. And you'll see as we use a glue stick, it would be just too much. Let's go ahead and use a soda bottle. I'm going to cut this down and show you exactly how quick we can make a super duper ant moat. First thing we want to do is we want a few inches. So I'm going to just cut it. In fact, since I've got my soldering iron, I'm going to start it right here. And then I'll finish it with my scissors. Now we have this. Now we can soften the edge with a soldering iron. You know how I love my soldering iron. Just so it's not, you know, sharp or anything. Give it a little bit of a softer edge. Now what we're going to do with the soldering iron is we're going to make a hole. You want to make sure that the cap is on really good. Now we're going to make a hole 
So we're going to get some wire through the hole. And you'll see as we go right in the middle, just one hole. That's it. And we're done with soldering iron now. Yep, it goes through. Let me unplug the soldering iron. So now that's unplugged. My glue gun is still plugged in. I like using dishes. A lot of these come with stands, but they're never, they're, they, they don't, well, I just think that I would rather put it on a dish than have a stand. Now we're going to put this through and see how long we want to make this. And remember, you're going to be hanging this up. So this will need a hook, and then you'll need a hook on the bottom as well. Now, if you're going to reach through on a tall tree or something, you can make this as long as you want. This way, if you couldn't reach before, you can make this long, hook it up on a tree. I'm going to make mine kind of short, and I think that's good. And then here, and you could use pretty much any wire you want. I'll say around here. You can get wire at the hardware store. Look around. You probably have something. You could use a coat hanger if you want. Okay, we're going to figure out. So let's figure out here. We're going to want to definitely do a hook. This is your top. Now, I'm going to suggest on the bottom that we're going to do a hook as well. Now, let me explain why. You can make a loop, but what if your hummingbird feeder has a hoop instead of a hook? Some of them do. They have a ring. So that's what I like to make on the bottom. I like to make a hook as well. So this way, it will work for either hummingbird feeder. So we're going to do the same thing here. It doesn't have to be so big. Just anything that's going to hold a hummingbird feeder. That's good. Remember, there's going to be no pressure on this because this is the way this is going to hang on a tree. And you're going to hang your hummingbird feeder underneath. Now what we're going to do is figure out how long we want it. I want it around like that. And now all we're going to do is fill the inside center with glue from a glue gun. And we want it centered. Because what we're doing is we're making sure the ants cannot crawl across. You can sit this on a cup and let it dry. Once it's dry, it's not going to go anywhere. It dries fairly quick. So you can use a glass or a cup and you can sit it in there. Make sure you get it exactly where you want. You can get fancy. Here's one I made out of a little cup. Now this is a small cup and I don't have problems using a small cup here. It will stay full of water for the whole day. I've got a little Yorkie in there, see? Oh, does that look like my little dog, my little kitty? I've got it all decorated inside. Isn't that cute? And so when it's full of water, it looks like a tiny aquarium. I hang the hummingbird feeder from here, and this hangs on the tree. This works really good. This is a small cup, so you can use anything you want. But a lot of you have asked and said that you had ants that were getting across because that was drying up. So now what you're going to do is you're going to have a nice tall one and they will not be able to get across that amount of water. And that water should last for a day or two. You want to make sure this is clean because sometimes the hummingbirds can take a drink out of it. And now you just want it to dry and then you've got yourself a super duper ant load. So here it's done. That's all there is to it. Now this is going to hold water. You're going to pour your water in here. And now you're going to hang this on your hook. I can't tip it. And down here, this is going to hold the water. And you're going to put your hummingbird feeder on the bottom. But look how nice that holds a lot of water. No ants can cross that. They can come down here. But once they get down here, there is no way they can cross that amount of water. And it will take a long time because they would have to go all the way down and crawl on the side. They will not be able to get to your hummingbird feeder at all. This is the perfect way to get rid of ants. So that is how easy it is to make. One last note. I know some of you have said you put turpentine in these things, vinegar in here to keep the ants from coming. You know, even in the hottest areas, you'll only have to fill this up once in a while. You go out there, if you've got a feeder out there, you're going to bring your feeder in every few days anyways to clean it. 
If it's low on water, just top, top it up with some water. The thing is, I've had birds drink out of it because they also need water and not just sugar water. So if the water is fairly clean, they're gonna come take a quick little sip or check it out. You don't want them checking out anything that's got vinegar or anything toxic in here. Don't put any soap in here, you don't need it. Just plain water and the ants will never be able to get to your feeders. And there's the shampoo ball. Isn't that look classy? Isn't that cool? And remember, you want to make the wire as long as you need. You got a tall tree and you want to hook this up a tall, tall tree, or maybe the edge of the house, you can see where you can hook it up. You can make this wire five feet long if you want, and then you can hang the feeder where you can see it and you can enjoy the birds. I hope I've given you some suggestions on how to get rid of your ant problem. And keep in mind, the ants aren't always marching. You only need it when they're out looking for food and many times they're not out. You won't need it all the time, unless you want to leave it out all the time. That's up to you. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.